welcome to everyone who's attending today. We're going to talk about Power Pivot, which is a part of Excel, and Excel Dynamic Arrays. There's uh, there's no real connection between the two. It's just that no one else talks about Dynamic Arrays, so I, I've added it in here. All right. So what we're going to do overview of the seminar um, a little bit a bit about Power Pivot um, itself. Already notice a missing capital P there. Um, and then it's mainly going to be demonstrations. So the two main demonstrations I'm going to do for Power Pivot are the loading of a JSON data set, which is based on Twitter API tweets, and then to demonstrate how um, how large a data set you can use, I'm going to use a, a data set which has 246 million rows in it, and that's available from the, the UK Data Service, SN number 7591. And then at the end, I'll just do a little um, run around the Excel dynamic arrays, which are relatively new. They're not as new. They're probably about a year old now, I should think. Um, it's just a, a few little nice things you can do. I say it's not really related to Power Pivot, but I just want to add them in. So today we're, we're probably going to go up to about an hour and a quarter in time, and then we'll add a bit of time on for questions at the end. So it's a bit longer than the usual broadcasts. Um, but there's quite a lot in the demonstrations to go through. So, um, oh, for those of you who aren't coding people, this is a coding-free webinar. Everything is going to be mouse-driven, apart from at the end when we do the dynamic arrays, so there'll be a little bit of, of typing in formulas, but then that's the way you normally use Excel anyway. So the background to Power Pivot, um, I think it first was introduced in 2000, Excel 2010, um, and it used to be a little add-in to Excel. You had to go out of your way to add it in. But now with um, Office 365, most of the versions of Office 365 have it already built in. So typically there's nothing for you to do to install it. And how do you know you've got it? It's got Power Pivot in the menu bar. And this is a proper menu option. Um, you'll also see the terms Power Query and Power View, which are essentially all integrated now into Power Pivot. We'll certainly use the, the Power Query Editor, but we think of the whole package as Power Pivot for creating data models and manipulating them. So what can we use it to do? Um, we have powerful data analysis. That's sort of like the selling point of, um, of Power Pivot. Um, we can create complex data models. So not only can we have a single data set, we can have multiple data sets in the data model, and we can relate them together in, in some ways, and then make use of that relationship when we're doing pivot tables and the like. Uh, you can process large amounts of data. That's the point of the se second demonstration. Um, much more than a million rows. Um, a million rows in Excel, I don't know if any of you have actually hit this as a problem, but if you try to load a, a data set with more than a million rows, it just says, chunters along, when it gets to a million, it says, can't load all of the file for you, which isn't very helpful. But um, people tend, tend to know that million rows is the limit, but it's a rather arbitrary limit, because it's not really related to how big the records are. It's just a million rows, and I stop, regardless of how much actual volume on disk it is. So you can create a million rows of data with 20, 30 megabytes of, of data. Um, the other thing you can do, we can import a variety of files, which is useful because the demonstration number one is a JSON file. Um, what is the data model itself? Well, it's, I think I've mentioned, a collection of tables with the relationships between them, or you can specify what, how they're related to each other. And it essentially, it, it's like, um, it's a completely, it's, it's integrated with Excel, but it's also quite separate from Excel in that it has its own analytical engine and, and database. Um, it's got its own set of features and functions, which it's going to use to do the data analysis. And of course, a lot of those um, features are manifest in, in the in the ribbon, and it's all point and click stuff. But behind that, as we'll see, that there's a whole array of, of, of functions which can be called and you can use them independently if you want to but we're not going to do that because this is coding free. Um, Power Pivot supports files, this is the Excel file up to two gigabytes in size 
and enables you to walk, work with up to four gigabytes of data in memory. Um, I think that is possibly slightly out of date because I think if you've got Excel, 64-bit version of Excel, I don't think there's any limits particularly other than the amount of memory. How efficiently it uses the memory though is another matter. But on the plus side, um, the data in your data model is stored in a highly compressed form. And I'll show you, I'll show you that when we get around to doing the, the large data set. So, power pivot demonstration. Um, a lot of people, <coughs> if, if you're not a coder, it's quite possible that you, you don't know what JSON is, and when you see it, it you're gonna run a mile, okay? It's not actually designed, or it is designed for application to application working. So, although it is human readable, it's not something which we would necessarily embrace. It's not as simple to read as a, as a table in a spreadsheet. Um, and from the application point of view, that's quite useful. Well, it's not useful, but it, it, it makes sense because it means they can, um, they, they, they can represent the data in, in efficient ways for the machine-to-machine -machine type communications. But where, what the problem we have is we want to extract data from these JSON representations and make it look like a nice little table that we're used to in using in Excel and the likes. Um, lots of APIs will use JSON to send and receive data. So if you're interfacing with an a API from the from the web or something like that, the chances are any data you get back will be in um, JSON format. In terms of tweets or the Twitter API, it also uses a, the JSON format. And frankly, um, in terms of the complexity of the JSON that the API, the tw Twitter API uses, this probably gets about as complex as you're ever likely to see. So if we can deal with this, we can deal with anything. And we're going to do it all effectively using point and click. So just a little bit of background about um, JSON. As I said, it stands for application to application communication, but you can read it. It's extensively used by APIs, I've always mentioned that. Uh, and there are many tools which make it even more human readable. Um, JSON Editor being one, I'm just going to show you in a minute. And you can actually get add-ins to your web browser to interpret JSON correctly or reasonably, um, as in it makes it more readable. Okay, so this is a, a little um, shot of, of some simple JSON. And the way it works is you've got a, an open bracket, a uh, curly bracket here, and a curly bracket there, oops, at the end, you go back one. And then you get this format. You get what's called a key, normally in quotes, and then colon, and then the value. And that goes all the way down for the record. Uh, record in, in um, or document in JSON terms effectively means um, a row in your table. Okay, And you can imagine this. If you try to squint your head around 90 degrees, you can imagine down this side here, these would be column rows, and here we've got column values. So these would be your, your um, table headings for the columns, and this, this data here would be the first row of your um, table. And then after this, there would be another open and close brackets here with another set of data. Now, JSON will actually repeat the column names every time, um, and then with new sets of values. Whereas, typically in our table, we write all the column names at the top, and then we just put the values beneath them, all in lined up, okay? So, JSON is a bit more verbose, but it, it, you can see that's quite readable. Then we get onto the complex JSON, uh, and this is actually taken, this example here is taken from a, a, a tweet, something returned from a tweet API, it's the middle of a tweet. So you can see this, so I haven't got the, the beginning, open, and close braces there. Uh, when I'm describing this, these open, the little curly brackets here represent nested structures. So within a, um, a, an example of JSON, a JSON document, um, you can, it will start, as we said here, with the open and close brackets. But within there, there can be more open and close brackets, open, open, and close there. 
and everything within there is also treated very much the same way, like a document in its own right. Now, when we're dealing with um, these curly brackets, they don't in themselves present too much of a problem because the way we can look at it is because these are all nested in one another, we can actually create a new column name just by using the dot notation. So if you take this example here of ID string, whatever that value is, what we can do instead of just saying ID string, we can say, well, within entities, user mentions ID string, and we can concatenate those three together, and that will produce a nice, unique column name. Very long-winded, but it will make sure it's unique. And certainly, in terms of the ID string here, ID string is um, a key value, uh, which is used several times within a tweet. So you have to have some way of distinguishing the two, okay? But in, in principle, it's, it's relatively straightforward of the approach you're going to take. You can, if you need to, just concatenate um, the different levels of the entities together. And we'll, we'll see when we look at the um, power pivot how we're given the option, do you want to do that or not? Um, the more complex example of the JSON is when we have the square brackets. A square bracket, open and closed square bracket, represents an, an array of values or a list of values. And the problem with these is that, they, that each value in here, so the three and the fourteen, they don't they don't have their own names. You would refer to them normally by using the index into the array. So the three here would be index zero, and the fourteen would be index one. And, and there could be more, we don't know. They haven't got individual names. And this presents problems when you're trying to convert this into a nice flat table-like structure. And the, the way this would normally be dealt with is that anything in square brackets that you want to keep, and let's face it, a lot of what we're going to look at on the Twitter we're going to throw away, but if you did want to keep something which is effectively a list, then the best way of dealing with it is actually to create a new table with those values in it. We're not going to get anything quite that complicated to do today, but, but that would be the approach that you would normally take. And then you'd end up with two tables, and then you'd have to create a relationship between the two tables. And that's where the, the, the relation of relational databases comes into play. But for here, for JSON, it doesn't need to use it because it can use this um, square bracket type structure. Um, just a bit on the terms, I'll probably already mention some of these. Um, a table is referred to a collection as a collection in JSON. So we're going to look at a collection of tweets. A row is a table of a table equates to a document in JSON. So each tweet is within a document, and a column in a table is referred to as a field in JSON. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to take a collection of, of JSON documents, which have, have individual fields in them, and create a single table with rows and columns in it. Okay? So essentially, it's a process, we're going to flatten down the um, JSON file so that we can use it in Excel. Okay, so on to the first demo. Um, for this demo, um, I'm just going to open Excel. This is standard Excel. You can see here I've got my little power pivot option there. Um, I don't need to worry about that at the moment um, because the first thing I need to do is import my data file. So on the data tab, I can get data from file from a JSON file. And then it's going to invite me to go and find my JSON file, which is somewhere in here. I've actually got a selection of data files, um, topical names. Um, essentially, I've named these files after the search term I used when I was looking for the JSON, for, uh, for the, the tweets. So um, select the first one. I'm just going to say import. And then JSON, uh, I beg pardon, Power or Excel and Power Pivot will realize this is an ex, uh, a JSON file, and it puts me straight into the Power Query Editor, okay? Because you, you can't import a JSON file in the same way as you'd import a, a CSV type file. 
Uh, before we get into that, I just want to show you what this JSON actually looks like. Uh, this is a JSON editor to um, a, 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 an application you can get for free in Windows 10. Um, I've loaded the file already into here, J coronavirus JSON. And this, what you see on the screen, is sort of what the JSON really looks like, except it's not really color colored the way this one is. Okay, It's already picking out things which helps you read it. If I um, click on the button there, it will format that to make it more human readable. It doesn't change the data in any way, it just makes things more readable. So you can see here, um, all of my um, uh, 100 tweets are effectively in a list. I can tell that by the square brackets there. And then within there, there's all sorts of structures. And it's nest. you can see that how deeply these things get nested. But right at the top level, we've got the nice easy ones that we might want, like when was this created, um, the ID string, um, this is the represents the user who made the tweet. Um, if you haven't used uh, the Twitter API before, you get an ID and you get an ID string. You should always use the ID string because, as you can see in this case, the ID itself has been truncated. And Excel will truncate them as well. So always go for the ID string when you're extracting the data. You get the full text of the tweet except the fact that's not the full text because that will be probably truncated and we'll see in a minute where we actually get the full text from. But you can see that the, the nested structure of this and also how much of it you're almost certainly not going to want. Yeah. So we do, we're not obliged to take everything that you see here. We can pick and choose what we want to take. So having started the load process, um, what um, uh, Power Query is saying, or the Power Query editor is saying, well, you seem to have this thing called statuses, which is a list, which I've just shown you. And then right at the end, we've got this um, record, which is search metadata. Now, we're not, we're not terribly interested in that because we know that all of the tweets are in this list here. So the first thing we're going to do is say, uh, take this and convert it into a table. This uh, was the only button up there to use, so we convert it to a table. And now, effectively, it looks very similar, but now this is now in table form, and we've got this list and record again. We're not interested in the record, so we're going to go to the list. With a right mouse click on that, I get this option to drill down. Okay? I'm going to take the drill down option, and now I get what will be 100 records, each one representing um, a, a tweet. Yes, or, or a document in JSON. It doesn't try to tell me what's in there because, as we've just seen, they're very complex structures. So it just says, well, it's a record. What do you want to do with the records? Well, the first thing we're going to do with this list of records is convert that into a table. And here it's going to ask me little questions which I can totally ignore. Um, select or enter the limit. I'm not interested in that. Uh, errors shows errors. I'm going to click OK. And now, I've now got a list of 100 records, yeah? And each, again, each one of these is one tweet. Up at the top here, um, I can't really expand this screen, but at the top here, this little symbol here, like two little opposite pointing arrows away from each other, um, is a little button. And if you click on that, what it will do, it's very much like um, the drop down in a, uh, an Excel table. It will show you a list of all of the fields inside the record. Okay? Um, and it will actually say the list is incomplete, but there is quite a few there. But just to make sure, I'm going to say load more. Okay, I've only got 100. And then I've got a complete list of all of the top level um, keys within the records. Um, one thing, I'll just go back to my JSON editor, just to, there's a different form which you can show this in. You can see here, it's, it's the same data, it's just presented in a different form. If I click on the statuses there, you can see against my records, which will come from 0 to 99 in this case, but in brackets here, it's telling me how many top level keys are in that document. And you can see that these numbers are not in fact all the same. Yeah, they vary 25, I think it's 29, okay? 
if I do say I want all of them, there's actually 31 listed there, I think, I counted. Um, the point being that two consecutive JSON documents don't all have to have the same set of keys in them. So you have to be aware of that when, you, when you're trying to load JSON, because you may accidentally um, miss out on some data. But here I, I've said I want them all. Um, remember we said that on records, or, or that's curly brackets, we can create column names by concatenating using the dot notation. And this little option here is, is saying, do you want to do that? Use original column name as a prefix. Well, in this case, because this is the top level, I don't need to have everything prefixed with column one. So I'm just going to uncheck that. And also, this is our first um, option for getting rid of stuff that we're not interested in. We certainly don't want everything. We might go from the created at, uh, the ID string, as I said, the full text. We'll see if that is the full text in a minute. Um, entities, and then further down, we have this retweeted status, and I'm going to check that as well, okay? And I'm going to click OK, and then it will actually load for us only the things which we asked for. So created that, the ID string, and the full text come in as just um, simple values, a day, a time, strings in, in all three cases, okay? The entities and retweet status come in as records. And in some cases, for the retweet status, they've got null values. That means that for this particular record, the second record, there was no retweet status um, key, okay? Which is quite acceptable. It means it wasn't a retweet, which you can probably also tell from the fact there's no RT in the front of these two, okay? So the next thing we want to do is drill down a little bit further and decide what it is we want to, um, whether we've got the full tweet there or whether we need to go to the retweet status. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to do is expand the retweet status. And this works exactly the same way. Load more. And you can see here I've effectively got... Uh, a very similar list because this is effectively the complete tweet of the which was retweeted so I, I select all the usual things but in this case I'm really only interested in the full text and the entities because what I'm trying to do is get um, a, a record of the full text of, of, of a given tweet okay so now I've got oh, a couple of things to, to show you um, on this left uh, right hand side here it keeps track of all the things I've done and if I want to I can delete a step or I can go back and look at something which I did before and so on I can go this all the way up the tree and all the way down the tree again yeah and I just wanted to go back there to show you that um, okay if I go back onto there I'm going to delete that step and do it again and what I did was I expanded that, load more, um, I got rid of that, and I wanted the IDs, and I didn't want the ID string, I wanted the full text, and I wanted the entities. And you see here, I can use original columns as prefix. That's unchecked, because that's where I left it before. And if I leave that unchecked and click OK, as I did before, you can see it will recognize the fact that I've already got something called full text, so it will add its own little suffix here uh, of dot one, and it does the same here for entities as well. Okay, so it will resolve the issue of um, of duplicate names as it needs to do so. Now, having got the, the, these out, what we want to do is we want to work out which of the tweets has the full text in it, and the rule is very simple: that if it starts with RT in the original, then the full text in the retweet status actually contains the full text. If it doesn't, well, this is going to be null anyway, so we know there has to be the full text. Okay. And what we want to do is now create a couple of columns which reflect that information. So what we're going to do is go up to add columns, and we're going to add um, a conditional column. And this, we're going to give it a name. So we'll call the first one um, 
Apple Suite. Um, this is going to be based on the column name um, full text one. And what we're saying is if full text one equals null, i.e. doesn't exist, then I want to use here this little drop down, I can enter a value or select the column. I want to use the full text because it's not a retweet, so the full text has the full text in it. And the L statement is uh, exactly the same. Select a column, and here I'm going to want the full text one because we know that's got the full text in it. Because it's not null, it has the full text. Click OK, and now I've got the full text in there. I'm going to do exactly the same again and do this for entities. So, for, oops, entities, if column name, <coughs> entity, I, I could use the, the, um, the full text one, it wouldn't make any odds because they're both null, we know they're going to be null. Null, then I want the column entities. Otherwise, I want the column entities one. Okay, I'm going to click here. Notice that these entities one and what have you, they get, they just get dragged in as they currently sit, so they're all records. Okay, so now on my full tweet and my full entities, I've got the full text of the tweet and this this record which contains the entities so these columns up here full text I'm using the control key to do multiple selections here are now not wanted so I can go to the home and I can say remove columns and I get rid of them again I'm just tidying up as we go because all we're interested in is the string, the time, uh, the full tweets, and the entities. So the only thing left to expand here now is the entities. And again, same routine. It's a record, therefore you get the list. You say load more if it's not complete, and you can see it's added media in there. Okay. Now, uh, for, for the demonstration, all I'm going to select here are the hashtags. Okay, I could pick them all. I'm just going to select the hashtags. And again, I don't need to have the prefix because hashtag doesn't appear anywhere else. So it's going to just come up as hashtags. Oh, and surprise, surprise, these are a list. Okay, now at this point, we've got a little bit more of a problem. This is getting to the stage where in our JSON um, in the JSON where we had square brackets here that should be able to find one user um, hashtags it doesn't matter square brackets these are things which we can't easily just expand in line as we've been doing with the records so when we um, click on this it will actually give me the option to expand into new rows okay now before I do that just want to point out at the moment we've still got a hundred rows, a hundred records, and these ID strings effectively uniquely identify each one. Um, potentially there could be duplicates there because I could have accidentally picked up a tweet, the same person tweeting twice. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add another column, but this time I just want a simple little index of of what my what my column what my rows are. So in the index column here, I've got options for starting from north, starting from one, or custom one. I'm just going to add one from one, okay? And then there you can see they're just numbering one to a hundred. And the reason I've just done that is just making it easier to spot things when I expand these hashtags. Because when I do the hashtags from a list and expand to new rows, what you can see is that some of them have come up as null which means there wasn't any hashtags in that tweet. And the other ones have come up as, oh no, let's just um, undo that. Um, and the other ones come up as records. So the records need to be expanded. 
Um, I'm not going to be interested in the indices. It's just tell me where about in the tweet it occurred. I just want to get the text of the hashtag. Okay. Um, I haven't got text in your house, so that should be okay. So text. So now instead of having that record, I've actually got the list, the name of what that hashtag was. It doesn't have the, the hash in front of it, it just has the, the name. Okay. Now what is interesting about this, the null I've already mentioned, that means there wasn't any. But if you come down here, these records number with an index of 10, there's several of them now, and that's because this tweet ID of 10, or tweet number index 10, had many items in that list. And so each one has been expanded out into a separate item. Now in practice, this means that all of this stuff around here, for nine of these, uh, uh, for there's eight of them, so seven of these eight are pretty well redundant. And again, this is the reason why under normal circumstances, when you get around to expanding the rows, you would normally separate this out into a separate um, little table by itself. Um, how would I have done that? I'm not going to do it for this example, but how would I have done that? If I go to the queries over here, this is taken from the file name, and if I right mouse click on that, I've got this option of duplicating it. And effectively duplicating it is splitting it in two, and I can continue on from where I left off and still retain the old one. So what I would do is I would keep the index here, keep the text there, and delete these three rows. And that makes a little table by itself. Okay? But for what we're doing, we're just going to keep it all together like that. Okay? Um, and that is essentially what all we, we're going to do on that. And so finally, if we're happy with this is how we want it, all we have to do now is say close and load, and we've got options here of how we're going to do this. If I just click on close and load, it will just write it back to my Excel spreadsheet, or the usual dialog of say, where do you want me to put it? Um, I can also do a close and load to, and at this point it will allow me to um, create it into a table, that's like the default, or in terms of using the data model, I can add this to the data model at the bottom here, and I can also say just create a connection, okay? So that means it'll keep a reference to where the file that you used, but the data will be put into the data model, okay? If I click on OK, what will happen? Nothing on my spreadsheet, but it says 133 rows loaded into into um, into the data model. Okay, so if I go back and and go to, into let's see, can I edit from there? If I go to edit, it will take me back into the query editor, and you see you can see exactly where I left off. Okay, um, if I want to load that into Okay, I'm not quite sure why that isn't loading that into the spreadsheet in the normal way. I'm not even getting a dialogue up. But anyhow, the last thing I wanted to show you, go back into here. Um, I've already shown you that um, on the on the right-hand side here, it's, it shows you all of the applied steps. And you can go up and down there, you can undo them, delete them, and redo them, and what have you. So this is a complete record of everything that you have done. And if I go into view and the advanced editor, what this will show me is a list of all of the steps that I took. And essentially, this is all the things it has done on my behalf. So I'm just going to do a control C to copy that. And I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to close the Power Query editor. And I'm going to close this Excel spreadsheet without saving it. And I'm going to open Excel again. Uh, so this is a brand new copy of Excel, empty uh, worksheet. I'm going to go to data, get data, and from other sources, and at the bottom here I've got this thing called blank query. And if I open that up, what I get is the query editor opening up with an empty 
clean slate. There's nothing on the applied steps. I've got a query name, a query one. I can rechange. I can change that if I want to. But if I now go into view and go to the advanced editor, again, this is telling me you haven't done anything. So if I remove all that and do Control V to paste in what I had before, and then I'm just going to change this first line here has the file name in it, and I'm just going to change this to one of my other files, PPE, and I'm going to say done. And it will then go through and apply all of those steps again, but using this different file. Okay, so I'm exactly the same position I had before, except this is, was done on a different file. So once you've got the set of instructions, it's worth your while saving them somewhere. Um, just co copy and paste, because it's just text. Just save it into a, in a notepad type file, and then you can use it, and all you have to do is change the, the, the file name. Let's see if this is going to let me. Ah, there. This sounds work for, for some reason. So now we have all of our text in in here okay it's just occurred to me there's one more thing I was going to show you uh, in here let's just go back into the editor one of the things you do when you are loading the data and you're transforming the data is um, the editor will try and make a, a good guess at the type of data you're loading up so um, we, we know this is meant to be a string because it's called ID string that's the whole point of it. But this created that. It looked sort of like a funny timestamp. But um, Power Pivot or Power Query didn't recognize it as such, and so it just left it as a string. Okay? If I wanted to, I could um, go to Transform, and I can say Data Type, it says any at the moment. I can try and say, well, it looks like a date time, at which point it comes up with an error, because it, it doesn't recognize that as a date time. So I can just back that out to where I was. And then if I wanted to, I could create um, new rows, add column, um, a custom row. And what I'm going to do is try and extract the bits of information from there which represent the date. Yep. And then to do this, this is the closest we sort of get to... to um, Excel in, in that we need to write a, um, a few functions uh, or make use of a couple of the um, items within that string, a couple of the function text items. So I'm going to call the first thing called month, mainly because that's the one that's closest to hand. And in here, this expression, um, well, if I was using Excel, I'd try and use the mid expression to extract from that string. So I'll type in mid. Now we can see here that it's giving me a whole host of things, none of which actually says mid, but text middle sounds pretty promising. So I'm going to go for text middle. I'm going to open the brackets, and it gives me some help immediately saying, how do you fill this in? Oh, that's good, because it looks just like it is in mid for, um, for Excel. So what I'm going to say is on the left hand, on the right hand side here I've got a list of the columns so we want to create that and then I've got to say what is the start position of the month and these um, strings start with zero like lots of things so it's zero one two three four starting at four and I want three columns yeah and that's all I want If I click on OK, you can see I've clicked, got May there. Um, I can do the same for month and year and put them together there. And having those as separated out, it makes it more uh, easier for me to manipulate the data using um, the times. Because this is just a string. If I split these all out into month, day, and year, I can then concatenate them together and actually have that treated as a date, which is a lot more useful than as it is there. And similarly, I could do the same thing for time. But again, it's just a case of adding the, the more columns. Um, I'll just do the um, one more, try and extract the, the day. 
day. Again, it's the same function I'm going to use. Um, open brackets. Crazy that. Comma. And now I'm starting for the date. So you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we'll try eight for two, for two characters. Let's see if I've got that right. Sixteen, and I can do the same for yeah. This is one that takes a lot of counting. Created that comma. Um, where was that? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Think about twenty-seven for four. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thir
So the steps we're going to follow here, we're not going to do them all. Um, first thing is to load the file. It's called EDRP gas. This is the one which has 246 million rows in it. Um, I'm then going to create uh, our month and year, our, our new columns, which we create in exactly the same way as we've just been creating columns there. Um, and then I'm going to do a group the data set by the non-ID month and year. Now, I haven't written it down here, but I think what that effectively does is it's going to, um, because of the way the data is structured, you get about up to 48 entries for each day of the year for each non-ID. And by grouping it by month, I can reduce the number of records down from the 246 million to about 180,000. So in theory, at that point, you could stop and just bring it back into Excel because it's well within Excel's limits. But in fact, what we're going to do is add a, do a little bit more work, and we're going to add what's called a geography file, which again, it's part of the same study number from the, the data service. And you can link those up or create a relationship between the two um, based on this uh, um, a non-ID field because that's common to both of them. And then we're going to go to um, Excel pivot tables and just um, see how we can create little um, dashboards with that data. Okay. So the bits I'm not going to do because of the time, um, I'm not talking about how late we're running now. I'm talking about the fact that this does actually take quite a while to do. Let's go back into there. Um, we're going to start from step four. So this is what the the gas um, file looks like. Um, this is taken from the um, from Power Pivot. You can see it's only got four fields, but 246 million records. You can see what we have are the non-IDs, which are effectively just numbers identifying a household. Again, a weird interpretation of a timestamp. Um, the HH is half hour, and it's just giving you the half hour of the date. So that's about eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then the gas uh, kilowatt hours used for that half hour period. Okay, so what we're going, what we're doing in, in the grouping, is um, oops, is we're going to add two rows first. Now th this month and this year have been created in exactly the same way as you've just seen me do for that other weird timestamp extracted from there, and then we're going to use the the, the um, group by screen in um, Power Pivot, and this allows me to select multiple columns, as I showed you before, it lists the columns we want, and then at the bottom here we're saying, well, I'm going to create a new col column, because it's going to be an aggregate of some kind. What kind of aggregate do I want? I want you to sum, and I want you to sum the gas kilowatt hours column. So essentially what I'm going to get is for each a non-ID within each month, within each year, I'm going to get the sum of the gas used. And that aggregation is what brings us down to 180,000. So in, in, as I say, in a sense, that might be enough for you, but we're, we're going to take it a bit further. Okay. So up to our gas three. Um, this little table, um, in, in, in here, I've already, the gas three spreadsheet, I've already got the data model set up. This little table I'll come back to in a minute or two, but first of all, I want to show you um, in Power Pivots, manage the data model, i.e. have a look, see what's in there. And in there, you can see the tables which have been set up. So I've got my EDMRP gas with all of the entries in there. So that's essentially where I got that screenshot from a minute ago. Um, this is the summarized version which of course now just has the non-ID, the month and the year and the monthly kilowatt hours. I go down far enough, some, someone will have started using some gas, I don't know where. But like I said, there's still 180,000 of these. Uh, and the geography table I mentioned is this one here. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I might just load that again just to show you how you load a simple file. Um, so I'm just gonna minimize that. You can have the, um, the 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 data model on Power Pivot data, Manage Data Model open at the same time as the Excel spreadsheet, whereas before you can't have the Power Query Editor open at the same time or uh, as you have the um, the spreadsheet. So you have to close the, the editor first. 
So from here, this is just straightforward um, Excel. I'm going to open a file from CSV. Um, where am I? Oh, I'm still in Twitter in it. Um, this geography file is the one I want to open. I'm going to say import it. I probably will complete this because I've actually already imported it once. But you'll get the idea. Um, create the import. And you get the dialog coming up like this. And it allows you to say, it, it says it's detected the types based on the first two rows. It immediately recognizes it's got column headers, so that's all right. And that it is, in fact, a genuine CSV file. Okay. So the chances are you're not going to want to load do any of them and then again at the load button down here uh, or rather if, if I click on the transform that will open the power query editor and I can do other transformation should I want to or the load button here is exactly the same as we had um, up in the top corner up here before I can load it into Excel this is a small file so that wouldn't be a problem or I can load it to the, the query editor okay and if I load it to the query editor um, I, I won't actually do it because, as we've seen in the query editor, I have, in fact, already got it loaded. Oops. And it's this file here. Okay? Just a straightforward, simple file. So, while we're in the query editor, what I want to show you is the diagram view. Now, you can see at the bottom here, little tabs, entries, four little tables I've got. The ED, EDRP gas is the original one, so that's not really needed anymore. But these three we're going to make use of. So if I look at the, the diagram, EDRP gas, he's out on his own. He's not connected to anything. We're not going to be using that in, that, in anything we do. Okay? But for these three um, items here, this is the one that essentially has all of the data in it. This has got the monthly kilowatt hours in it. And what we're doing is, I'll delete these and do them again. Oops, delete. Delete from model. So, so your starting point is three independent tables. But we know that in the geography file, the, a non-ID, spelled slightly differently, is effectively the same thing as the non-ID in there, in the summarize file. So we can actually just drag across to it, and a link is created for us automatically. So these tables are now linked by the non-IDs. And similarly, our table three, um, I'm going to do the same thing. And here, I know that the month here is related to the month name. Yeah. So again, just drag it across, and the link is created, and there we are where we had it before. Uh, the table three here. Let me just minimise this. Not have done the links. This is table three here, and what I did is from um, I just typed this in and made it into a little um, table. And if I click down here, you can see it's called table three. Okay. And then I clicked. In the Get and Transform Data section, I clicked on From Table Range, and then it will automatically load it into um, the Query Editor, and then from there I could um, add it, load it into the um, into the into the data model. Okay, I'm not going to do that again because I've already got it there once, so I'm going to discard that one. Um, the other thing I did. When I had it in, once I'd got it into table, um, the, the, the data model, um, this is just as it was when I typed it in. But what I then did was I selected the, the north, uh, the monthly name column, and I went to this item up here, the sort and the sort and filter. I said sort by column, and I clicked on that. And then that brings up this little dialog which allows me to, for the column I've selected, month name, I can say how I want it to be sorted. And then this here, I've only got one option here, I'm going to sort it by month num. And the reason, what that allows to happen is that under circumstances where you want to sort these months, it will sort them based on this number system down here, i.e. in the order that you see them there. Whereas, had I not got this done, 
and I hadn't set up this sort by column, when you sort these months, they'll come out in alphabetical order, which is typically not what you want to happen, okay? But that's already been set up for me. So the only thing that remains to do now is to, from from you can do from here, from the um, Power Pivot, there's this little pivot table, and I can say pivot table, and it gives you lots of choices. So I'm going to go for a um, vertical chart and table. Uh, new worksheet, so this is very much like normal pivot type stuff. And at the bottom, I've got my pivot table here and the chart at the top, nothing in them. But what you notice on the right-hand side is I've got a list of all of my tables. And these are all of the tables from the model. Now, we're not interested in the first one, and that last one is just the one from um, the Excel spreadsheet itself. Um, so the ones we're interested in are the summarized data, because this has got the monthly kilowatt hours. We're definitely going to want that in the values. Um, although I don't want the sum of the kilowatt hours, I'm just going to change that value settings to average. And I'm going to set the number format to two decimal places. Okay. Which doesn't tell me very much, just tell you the overall average. So what do we want for columns? For columns, I want um, months. Now, if I try and take the month from here, which I'm quite entitled to do, you can see what I was saying before. Because that's just the straightforward month, it comes out in alphabetical order, which isn't what we're going to want. So get rid of that and pick the month name from table three. And now they're all in the right order. Okay. And finally, what I want to do this by is this thing called nuts one. Um, I don't know if you've heard of nuts nut system, but essentially it breaks the country down into different regions and gives each region a letter. I can't remember what the actual mapping is. I think I is London, M, I'm pretty sure Scotland, and so on, northwest, northeast, and so on and so forth. You, you've possibly seen them before. Okay, so now what I've got in there is a, a table based on the data from 246 million rows summarized into a little manageable spreadsheet dashboard. And up here for the chart, I'm going to do something very similar. Um, kilowatt hours, say, uh, the geography, I want the nuts one along there. And table three, I want the month name down there. So now again, just another little graph. It's a, it's a bar chart. I might want to change that perhaps to a line, all lines on there. And the final thing I want to do is add a couple of slices. I want a slicer for nuts one and yeah. Now yeah isn't featuring in any of my um in the chart as such, but I can still use it to, to um uh filter the data. So my two little things up here. Click this one go to report connections in the under the slicer just need to make sure sheet four so that's going to link that one slicer with both my chart and table and we do the same here table and now when i um remove or add things from here it will affect both of the tables and charts okay so 2010 isn't much good because we haven't got a full year 2008 isn't much good because we haven't got a full year 2009 is the best sort of set of data the most complete set apart from UKL there okay and uh, again similarly for, for here I can um, systematic the dash dash is an area where they, they wouldn't give an area for um, disclosure type reasons 
Um, but all of the other ones I can either click individually or I can click multiple ones and have them all appear on the graph. Okay. Oh, that is still saying sum. Did I not change that to month? Change that to average. That's better. And as you can see, as we might have concluded that over the year, everyone across the country uses less gas in the summer than they do in the winter. Okay. Took 246 million rows of data for me to work that out. But there you go. Okay, that's the end of the demo for this. So I'm going to close, I'm going to minimize that at least. And then just the last few minutes, um, a little bit on, on um, dynamic arrays. What are they? They're, they're, they're relatively new, about a year old now, I should think. Um, but they, they got rolled out gradually, so not everyone got them at the same time. They're in most of the um, um, Office uh, Excel editions now, I think. Um, and what it allows you to do, or what they allow you to do, is use a function which is going to return more than one value. Now, we we'll probably all use functions like the sum function, where you give it as input lots of different cell or cell ranges, but it also always just returns a single cell. And that's the same with most of the old Excel formula um, formulas. Um, there were a few specifically, obviously, array-based, like the, the ones for dealing with matrices and what have you. But, but generally, um, people, they weren't used very much. And also, if you wanted to end, enter an array, you have to use this control shift enter and, and curly brackets. Um, and again, not many people, even if you used them, you could never remember the next time you wanted to use them how to do it. So what we've done, what Max have done, they've sort of phased this out in favor of these dynamic arrays, where you can have a function and it will automatically return many values if it's relevant. So for that, we've got some completely new functions, and some of the older functions behave a bit differently because they make allowance for the fact that you get maybe asking for more than one cell to be returned. And then we have. Um, you can, having created one of these dynamic arrays, we've got ways of referencing the the entire array rather than individual value. So um, how do you know if you've got them? Well, I, I suspect this is superfluous now because I think most people will have them. Uh, but if you type in the formula, and it doesn't much look like a formula, but A1 to A3, um, that is a range of three cells, these three down here. And if you type it into this into this cell here, it, if it comes back as one, two, three, then it's a dynamic array. If it only comes back with one, which is what the old system would have done, then you haven't got dynamic arrays. Or alternatively, you could just search one of the new functions like unique, which is probably a quicker way of doing things. Um, in all, there are six new functions. There's a filter, a round array, sequence, sort, or binary. We're just going to look at um, about three of these, I think. Um, but the links here will take you to the, the full definitions and examples. So for this, I need to open. I've called this Microsoft because I pinched the data from Microsoft that I'm using. OK, we'll start off with the, the, the sequence examples of sequence and the way this works in, in this column here I've just listed what it is I'm doing the actual function call or formula is in on these cells here so you can see if I just say colon, uh, equals sequence five I get five rows counting up one two three four five very simple straightforward if on here I say one comma five that's not saying from one to five. That's saying I want one one row and five columns with numbers in them. So it, it does them across. I can combine them both, and I can have um, a little uh, matrix set up here, um, saying three, four, and it just starts counting from one by one 
for th uh, four, four columns, three rows. There are other parameters I can use. So the three fours are the same as I've had before. Um, here I can give it a start value of 10, and I want you to go in steps of 10. Okay, so what do I end up with? 10, 20, 30, 40, blah, 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 all the way up to 120. Okay, so a simple way of, of getting sequence of numbers into a, a range of cells. Uh, it's probably more fun using it with other functions. So in this one here, let me just actually make all this a bit bigger. That might help. Um, here, what I'm doing, I'm going to use the mid function, and I've given it a string, A to J, and then for sequence, I've said 10. So that will give me 10 rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But because it's within the mid function, it's going to use that as a second parameter to mid uh, 10 times. And then the last one is just the mid func um, parameter saying I want one character. So if I run that, what I get is A, B, C, D written down the side. I do something very similar, only add in this transpose function, and then I'll write them across as columns like that. Uh, and finally, what I can do, a more complex um, example, I've got two of them actually here. The first one is using the text function then within the day. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm extracting the month in the full um, written format from the date, it's based on today's date, and I'm doing it from one to six. So what I do end up getting is a list of the first six months, okay? And this final bit here is one of the other functions uh, called round array, which again, like sequence, allows you to give you rows and columns, and then um, a start or between values, really, between one and 100, random number between one and 100. And you can see there, all of the random numbers. So, so like together, it's a sort of way of, of, you can imagine this as a way of, of creating your own test data, perhaps. Uh, moving on to unique. This is the, um, this is Microsoft data I've borrowed from one of their database systems. Um, it, it's just a, a good example because it's about people and like, names and addresses and uh, education, things like that. In it. So it just seemed a, a, a reasonable example of data. So what do you think it does? It does, it allows you to specify an array or a column name in this case, um, and it will actually extract the unique values in that array. Okay, so if I run that, it just lists in here. The five values, okay, across the whole of that 2,000 data set. Um, some things that I haven't pointed out at risk of breaking things. If I go to the second that or if I go to the top value, this is where I typed in my expression, my formula. And if I click on one of the, the ones below it, you can see the same formula, but it's sort of grayed out. And not as it grayed out, if I hit the delete key. It won't let me delete it. Yeah. If I try to overwrite it, what happens is it will let me overwrite it, and then everything below it disappears. And it, the point where I put the formula in, you get this error called spill. This is a new error type, if you like. And effectively, what it's saying is, well, you've asked me to do something, but you haven't left me room to do it. And um, previously, with um, array type functions, you had to mark out the spot where you wanted the answers to go, and you had to get it pretty well right, otherwise you got upset. Here, it will just spill down um, and use the space, or spill across and use the space, and uh, providing there's nothing in the way. So if I just delete that now, then immediately it can put them back in. Uh, this unique list here, I can then just add another little for, standard type formula and to do a sum of count ifs, and this is effectively going to be the frequency um, of each of the occurrence of, of all of those values. Okay, so I can get little um, frequency tables out, and that's just doing the same thing for. Uh, I think that one was 
education and then occupation. Um, this is a unique taking using the middle name. I was quite surprised how many different letters of the alphabet are used in middle names. Um, there's also a sort function. So if I'd wanted them in alphabetical order, I could have concatenated this with the sort function. But one of the other things you can do with unique is you can actually, if you, there's a third parameter, which if you set, by default it's false, if you set it to true, it will actually only return the values where there is genuinely um, only one of value of that type. So for the middle names, there's only three which only occur once. Yeah. So you can use that to find unique values. The, the um, previously to this, if you wanted to do this sort of thing, you'd probably end up using a pivot table to do it. So now you can just do it in line as you want. And finally, the filter oops, um, allows us to take our data and select a subset of data. So what I've, this is just a little bit of setup I've done here using my other queries. So this list here is a unique table filter of occupations, as we saw before. And here I've just set up a little um, uh, drop down list using the uh, data data validation. If I go to that, you can see Yes, I wanted a list, and you can see what what's been put in here. Um, it's the the address of that first cell, the A two thousand and seventy, and then at the end, if you put a hash sign, that means it's not just that cell; it is the array, the dynamic array associated with that cell. So again, I don't have to know how long that list stays. I just have to know where it starts and put a hash at the end of the name. Okay, so the effect of that is I get this little drop down list. So on my little filters, what we're doing here, um, <coughs> we're going to filter on the table filter, I should point it out, is the name of this table, the whole table. It's called table filter. Table unique was in the other. Um, in the unique worksheet. So table filter is this one here. And then I'm going to filter the table filter based on the values in the occupation column having the value of clerical. Okay? So if I copy that. And just get rid of the little Really? Oh, I've got a spill because, of course, I've got other things in the way now. So if I'm bringing this control C. I'm just bringing this down here at the bottom. You see, as soon as I did the um, control V, you can see up here, this is the expression. And this is the data that's being returned. So it's all of the table. And you can see, I say all of the table, all of the ones where the occupation is clerical down there. Um, I can also do it based on the value I have in here. Now, at the moment, that is still saying clerical. But if I paste that in now, just undo a couple of things. Now, right, this is where I was before, except now I'm using the cell value. So if I go back at the top here and pick another one, like skilled manual, and go down, you can see now it's all changed to skilled manual. So I can use a drop down in order to control what it is I'm looking for. 
Uh, just one final little example here. Let me just get rid of that one first. I think. This one here, you don't have to return all of the columns from the table. So here, what I've got is for the filter for the what I'm filtering on I've just got a range of the columns from first name to last name and then I've said I want you to find me the ones where the middle name is Y okay so there you can see this there's only two value two examples with the middle name of Y so you don't have to return the entire width of the table um, you can have just a set of consecutive columns Okay, I think that's it. I'll stop there. There are a few other examples um, to be found um, at the links which I've got here. So if you want to know more about dynamic arrays, link there, power pivot, there's them and many, many more.